say, Peace be upon you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we come before the Lord to offer this holy sacrifice, we pray for our relatives and friends whom perhaps we shared supper with yesterday, or perhaps are far away, for their well-being and in gratitude to God for their friendship and their love. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who by the grace of the Holy Spirit have filled the hearts of your faithful with gifts of charity, grant health of mind and body to your servants for whom we beseech your mercy, that they may love you with all their strength and with all their love do what is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In a vision, I, Daniel, saw during the night the four winds of heaven stirred up the great sea, from which emerged four immense beasts, each different from the others. The first was like a lion, but with eagle's wings. While I watched, the wings were plucked. It was raised from the ground to stand on two feet like a man and given a human mind. The second was like a bear. It was raised up on one side, and among the teeth in its mouth were three tusks. It was given the order, up, devour much flesh. After this, I looked and saw another beast like a leopard. On its back were four wings like those of a bird, and it had four heads. To this beast, dominion was given. After this, in the visions of the night, I saw the fourth beast, different from all the others, terrifying, horrible, and of extraordinary strength. It had great iron teeth with which it devoured and crushed, and what was left it trampled with its feet. I was considering the ten horns it had, when suddenly another, a little horn, sprang out of their midst and three of the previous horns were torn away to make room for it. This horn had eyes like a man and a mouth that spoke arrogantly. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire and wheels of burning fire, a surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. I watched then from the first of the arrogant words which the horn spoke, until the beast was slain, and its body thrown into the fire to be burnt up. The other beasts, which also lost their dominion, were granted a prolongation of life and a time for a time and a season. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, he received dominion, glory, and kingship. Nations and people of every language serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion 
that shall not be taken away. His kingdom shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Mountains and hills bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Everything growing from the earth bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and external praise to him. You springs bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Seas and rivers bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You dolphins and all water creatures bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you birds of the air bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you beasts, wild and tame, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia, alleluia. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Consider the fig tree and all the other trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The scriptures are very clear that the present order of creation with its disorder will at a certain point pass away. But that Jesus, the Word made flesh, will not pass away. His love for us that brought us into being and that redeemed us does not change, but helps us to negotiate the changes that are inevitable and providential in our earthly life, which is marked by continual change. And sometimes we're happy for the changes because it marks improvement in our situation or in our well-being. Other times the changes are painful as we have to let go of past goods in the hope of future and even better goods to come. But change is the mark of all our lives. Our Thanksgiving celebration yesterday was not exactly the same as it was a year ago or five years ago or ten years ago different, 
Some things we might say better, other things not as good, but different. But one thing can always be counted upon, the person of Jesus. the truth and the wisdom that he imparts to us through word and sacrament. And Jesus says to Peter, whom he declares to be the, the rock of his church, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. She is the community of God will endure as well. Even as she passes through time, being purified and sustained by the presence of Jesus, her head, her bridegroom, her Savior. To turn from God, whether it is a human will that does it or an angelic will, is a truly horrible thing. Although the horror of it is oftentimes hidden from visible sight or from uh, discernible, uh, discernible things. But it is like a disease that festers and in time becomes visible and manifests itself in various horrible ways. As we see the disorder in our own civil society, disorder in our own hearts because of sin and its effects. And sin is the Ultimately, the personal rejection of Jesus and friendship with him. So the book of Daniel, the visions granted to the prophet, show us terrible, horrible beasts, which have really been kind of the inspiration of the whole horror genre in film and uh, in books. Just variations on the one theme. The horror of sin, of a will separated from God, and the futility of that type of life. But in the vision we see the Ancient One, God the Father, seated on His throne. He is not overthrown. These beasts have no power over Him. And we see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven to receive dominion over all of creation. It is a vision of the Messiah, of Jesus, the God-man. These beasts, though it seems at times to conquer him as on the cross, yet at that very moment when it seems their conquest is complete, their true powerlessness is revealed in Jesus' resurrection and ascension to the right hand of the Father. And in the gift of the Holy Spirit that he extends to us, given to us in baptism and received in faith, the beasts of this world fall powerless before us. And we are given the hope and the promise to share in the resurrection and in eternal life, the life of God himself. These are thoughts that the church would have us consider in these final days of the liturgical year. And what gives us great consolation is that the doors of mercy are always open to us. Doors which bring us healing, light, renewed strength, and a firm hope. Let us always 
pass through those doors of mercy and never turn away, but embrace Jesus who never passes away. Let us stand. We wait in hope for the resurrection of the dead that is promised to all those who believe in Jesus and who allow his spirit to dwell in their hearts. Lord, fix our hearts here on earth firmly on heaven that we may live earthly lives full of hope and heavenly grace. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, keep us mindful of our responsibility to intercede for our brothers and sisters in Christ, those here on earth, and the holy souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Lord, for the souls of the faithful departed, among our family and friends, benefactors, all those whose names are written on the envelopes of our altar for whom this Mass is offered, that they may come to the vision and the peace and light of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for peace in the world and the protection of our service men and women and first responders, for those who've fallen, for the consolation of their families, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings of unity and peace upon all marriages and families, for an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for God's blessings upon our parish and all of our parish apostolates, that, we, that as we cling to the word of God amidst the many changes of this life, we may bear fruit for the new evangelization, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, and for the special prayers which we bring before the Lord this day. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Father of all who are perfectly just and perfectly merciful, Remember your covenant with your children, that those souls who linger in purgatory for their purification may by our prayers be swiftly drawn to perfect happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. In the spirit of the God, may be the sacrifice of your in the sacrifice and your sacrifice of your pleasing. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Have mercy, O Lord, on your servants, for whom we offer your majesty this sacrifice of praise that through these holy gifts they may obtain the grace of heavenly blessing and the glory of eternal happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus, your Son. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with Saint Hugh and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Rule him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ. Whoever does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother and sister and mother, says the Lord. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Awesome. Thank you. The body of Christ. Let us pray. We ask you, Lord, as we receive the divine mysteries, grant your servants, our relatives and friends, to whom you have given a love for us, pardon for sins, consolation in this life, and unfailing guidance, 
that all of us, united in your service, may rejoice together before your face. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together our prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.